Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Today I am super excited to have Kimberly Gautier back on the podcast. If you missed her the first time around, we were talking about transitioning your pet to a raw food diet. And today we are talking about how to help your dog lose weight. And she has done this with her larger breed dog. So I'm really excited to get her tips and tricks. We talk about a few different things. I, I love having Kimberly on the show. Um, make sure to stick around to the end because she's gonna let you know where you can find her. She is, of course, the uh, woman behind Keep the Tail Wagging, which is one of the most popular blogs in the pet uh, raw feeding niche as well as authoring her own book on raw feeding dogs. Make sure you check all of that out in the show notes. Without much further ado, here's the interview. I'm so excited you were able to make it today because you are seriously one of my idols and I love how oh, Thank you. Thank you so no, much. Really, like I, I literally like go through my social media and like, stop following and like mute and i'm like i i always am like i want keep the tail wagging at the top like show me that first oh thank you thank you so much that makes me feel so good because i've been i to tomorrow will, will be two weeks that i've had whatever is going on in my head i'm so tired and it's like and usually when when i'm sick i am super hard. I'm already hard on myself. When I'm sick, I'm super hard on myself. And so um, a friend contacted me last week, completely hysterical about going to the vet. And I was just sort of like, you know, what? I'm not doing this anymore. I'm shutting everything down. No. And I always do that whenever I'm sick. It's like, I'm shutting it all down. This is stupid. <laughs> so thank you well, for saying that. That makes me feel great. Yes. I'm glad you're not. It's like everything you talk about you put so much time and energy and like, it's really thought out. And I don't know how you have the time to do it, honestly. Like half the time I'm like, I don't even know, like how, how am I gonna answer somebody's question? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who has time for this? It is, it's, isn't it so funny because it's like, I feel like I'm failing so badly because I haven't- Oh my gosh, no. I haven't posted anything in probably a week. Uh, you know, I, I post stuff here and there, but. I have, I'm so behind like on rewriting my book, on writing blog posts, on my Patreon. And it's just like, it's, you know, my partner got COVID. I didn't get COVID, but I got the flu. <laughs> and, and so, and what's funny is that I was way sicker than he was. He Aww. bounced back like within a couple of days, two weeks later, and I still have this cold dragging on. It's just I'm like, so I'm, I'm a big whiny baby right now. So <laughs> thank you so much for saying that because I just, I feel like, you know, am I even doing anything? And when's the last time I posted something? And yeah, so thank you. <laughs> oh, it's, it's truly how I feel. And I'm so sorry that you're, I've, I've talked to, I mean, so many people have had this summer cold. I don't know what it, like I got it, I got it in April and I feel like I had COVID, but I didn't go get tested. And I just kept taking my immune support and was drinking tons and tons and tons of water and was like, give me protein, give me protein, give me protein for mm -hmm. three days. And by day four or five, I was like, okay, I'm back to like the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, we are here <laughs> today to talk about helping your dogs lose weight. Ooh. And I know, I know you've done it. And yes. that's why I wanted, I wanted to talk to you about it because in my mind, like there are so many different scenarios. First of all, you've got a healthy adult dog. That's one scenario. You got puppies. That's another scenario. And then, you know, if you have dogs that are, um, compromised where, you know, they might, might have some sort of disease or illness, like that's going to be a whole different scenario. So 
tell me, tell me about this. <laughs> tell me what's going on. I don't, it, you're, you're so right. Cause it's, it's, and it's, Interesting to me because, you know, my raw feeding journey started in 2013 and I find it interesting that there were so many things that I believed like 2013, 14, 15, that I'm like, oh my gosh, that is wrong. And, you know, like one, and it's, that's why it's like, I love, I don't really participate in a lot of discussions online. I just like following along because I learned so much. And one thing that I never considered, but is important is you know, someone posted about, I think she's a nutritionist and it just drives her crazy when people are going to put their dog on the diet. So they take away some of the food and just add green beans to the bowl. And she was just like, because you're not thinking about the fact that you're compromising their nutrition. They're not getting their calories and, and, and things. And it's like, that's kind of the opposite of what you want to accomplish. And I actually did join in on that conversation because I was like, well, what are we supposed to do? Because that's what everyone has been telling each other. And, um, and it does, it gives you, like, if you can only cut back on the food so much and you have a dog that might have an injury that prevents walking or you live in an area where going on long walks just isn't feasible, you're kind of backed into this corner of what to do to get your dog to lose weight. And um, so I have found that, you know, it's just I tried when Sydney was alive. She was, I think, at her heaviest, like in mid 80s, like 85 pounds. When she passed away, she was probably like a little over 60 pounds. So basically she was 20 pounds overweight for a long time. And, you know, for a human, 20 pounds overweight, it's not that, I mean, it is significant, but it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. You know, you can like drop 10 pounds, 10 of those pounds and feel a lot better maybe. But for a dog, that's really significant. And I could not get the weight off of her. And I would, um, I tried so many things. I would have people, you know, of course, you know, with social media, everyone wants to give advice, but then they also want to give advice in a very aggressive, you're a horrible pet parent way. <laughs> and so I just kind of, you know, muted everyone. I mean, you know, not literally, but, you know, I just didn't listen anymore because it was just like, you're not here to really help me. And it was Ronnie Lejeune of Perfectly Rossum who reached out to me and um, and asked questions. And I think she is the first person that really showed me just by that, you know, um, kindness, how important it is to not judge, to just ask questions. Actually, if you're gonna have a conversation with someone, make sure you're both on the same page. Mm -hmm. If you're just approaching someone with advice, but you don't know anything about the dog's history, their health, their diet, where the person lives, what their schedule is. If you don't know any of those type of things, how can you possibly help? And so she asked me questions and I was talking to her like, this is what I've been doing. This is what I've tried to do. This is what our, you know, our, um, what's holding us back. And it's basically, she had um, a partial cruciate tear that, and she just had very low mobility. And although she was on a joint supplement that was helping, she just wasn't really an active dog. She was my couch potato. Mm -hmm. And um, Ronnie told me that, you know, instead of me walking my dog, kind of like, you know, these weren't her words, but what I took from it is let my dog walk me. So start with 15 minutes a day. And it could be 15 minutes where we're just walking very slowly, or maybe, you know, if she needs to sit down and rest, let her rest and build up on that. And in a year, she lost the weight and by just us walking every day. And we just started with 15 minutes, 15 minutes. At first, we would probably go like 20 feet and she would just sit down and be like, I'm not going any further. So I'd wait. And then when she was ready to get up and go in the house, she would get up and walk back in the house. And that's all we did for like a week. And um, I started getting her going further and probably, I don't like maybe within a month or two, um, we live on five acres. So we would walk the perimeter of our property. And at first we did it once and then I pushed her and we were able to do it twice a day. But she, and then along with that, you know, I cut back her food a little bit. Um, mostly it was instead of taking food away and putting green beans in the bowl, like a lot of people do, I started thinking about how much does she really need to eat? Because she's obviously not 
a super active dog. So she doesn't need to eat a high calorie meal. I just need to make sure she gets enough to um, sustain her and she's doing well. And so that ended up saving me tons of money because, you know, I was overfeeding all of my dogs and I cut back her food and yeah, she trimmed right down. I didn't have to use any special supplements. I didn't have to put her on a special diet. It was just exercising at her pace. Yeah. And that's so important because everybody jumps to food and we all forget how important exercise is for our dogs. And it has been really apparent to me this summer. We didn't get a spring this year in central Texas. (laughs) We went from beautiful 60, 70 degree days to 100. And it's (laughs) been a hundred degrees for like six weeks now. And I know, I mean, I know my dog is missing her walks and I really am too. And I'm like, we've, we gotta, you know, I play with her more in the house, but it's, it's a challenge, you know, it's Mm -hmm. like, we've got, we've got to figure this out, especially because, um, she does, she's not super overweight, but she probably has two pounds that she, she could stand to lose. (laughs) And I mean, that doesn't sound like much, but she's only 14 pounds, <laughs> like you were saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for her, that is, and I, honestly, it's like, we were, we were doing really, really well over last fall in the winter. And then I think all of the cooked food treats that <laughs> she gets from my husband, <laughs> he just loves to give her treats. And I mean, I do too, don't get me wrong, but I'm much more picky about the treats I give her. Um, They're, they're all like dehydrated single ingredient. And he just, just, he loves, loves, loves giving her leftovers from dinner, which most of the time is a steak, but you know, sometimes it's not. (laughs) I'm like, okay, how about if we have breaded chicken, we don't give her the breaded chicken. (laughs) I, with Johan, I actually put out a bowl this past winter um, at the end of the, like in the evening. So when he was eating, cause we never eat together because I'm like that person. I've always been like this when I'm a kid, I eat when I get hungry and that can be once a day. Sometimes it can be five times a day. It's just like, whatever, but he's very regimented. So when he's eating, I will go and, um, I like frozen vegetables better than canned. And I will mm-hmm. pop in some frozen vegetables into the microwave and, um, put them in a bowl and set them out and be like, this is what you can give them. And um, it took a while for him to like, but now he he does. He'll even ask and or I'll put out treats like these are the treats the dogs can have this week. Um, and he's not really big on giving tons of food. So it's not that much of a concern. But I have learned to, especially with Zoe, because Sydney passed away in 2020, Zoe's my only girl. I'm convinced that female dogs gain weight easier than male dogs. Um, I have no proof of this. It's just, and my my study is two dogs that I have. <laughs> <laughs> so I and my two dog study, I'm convinced that female dogs gain weight a lot easier. And so Zoe is my my girl, and she's not really a fan. I mean, she'll go with me, but she's really not a dog on the leash type of dog. Um, and that's my fault. It's not really her personality is how she was raised when you live on land and they can just run and go whenever they want to. It's an adjustment when you have to put them on a leash and take them someplace. And so she's used to like hunting and, and looking for things and, and a leash sort of slows that down when I can, I'll walk her off leash when I know that no one's going to be around. And she's really, she's the only dog I can do this with. And Sydney was the same way. And because of that two dog study, I'm convinced that female dogs are smarter than male dogs. Um, Either that or just easier to train. Like you can train them via osmosis, but she will, when she sees a bicycle or someone coming, she comes to me so I can put her back on the leash and we walk until they go past. And then she looks and I take her off the leash and she just, and she never goes far. She just goes along with me and we just stop and let her sniff. And I was always really worried because it's like, we're going on these walks. We're not really, I mean, the walk will take 45 minutes, but we're not going very far. We're like maybe going in a mile or two because we're stopping so she can sniff things. And I think, I don't know which, 
person puts something out there. But a couple of years ago, uh, there were people that were posting a lot of things like, you know, let your dog sniff, let your dog enjoy the walk and or, you know, or break up the walk. So your dog has times of sniffing and times of walking. And most recently, I saw a meme that was sort of like your dog sits patiently while you binge watch Netflix. Why can't you just stand patiently while they binge walk, you know, the blades of grass? And that was a nice, like, oh, I feel so ashamed to type of me. <laughs> but um, but I just, I, I trust that, you know, this is how her exercise is. And, um, and it just means that we'll have to do more things or we'll have to do it more often. Um, but just to keep the weight off of her because she, she can gain weight. Like she can walk past a plate of food and put on pounds. It's quite impressive. <laughs> yeah. I actually like, um, to, especially if people have a really hard time with that, like a structured walk versus like a sniffing walk, then to use either two different leashes or two different harnesses. So like, one is designated for oh, yeah. a structured walk and one is does and i think that not only works for your dog but also like for you psychologically <laughs> like yeah. okay, this is a <laughs> yeah I, I i like to um to, to give people those sorts of options to help them with the the sniffing because i do think it is really important but um yeah. so a couple of things about this losing weight thing one for puppies and for dogs that may have medical issues, in my mind, if I have a dog in either one of these categories that needs to lose weight, I and I'm especially if I'm doing like a DIY food or I, I feel like contacting somebody for um, a meal plan, like Ronnie, you were talking about, mm -hmm. like that would be where my head would go. Is that something you would also recommend? I would recommend it, but it's not something I would do. And the only reason why is because I've been doing this for so long that I just go into auto mode when it comes to my dogs. I think if I were addressing a health issue that I've never had experience with before, um, I would speak with a veterinarian or a nutritionist, um, both possibly with Scout. Scout has been living with cancer for um, 18 months. And so pretty excited about that. But there is a time when because he's on prednisone as part of the his regimen, and it makes him hungrier. So there is a time when he, he usually is around 70, 71 pounds. That's what his weight is. But he went up to 74 pounds. And that was rough, because it's like, I have this ravenously hungry dog. Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do? So um, I decided, you know, fine, if you have to eat, then you're going to eat romaine lettuce. And I went and just got organic romaine lettuce. And it, it was like, you know, I don't, they call it something, but it's the, the, just the long stretch. And I would just basically either rip off some leaves for him or give him the whole thing. And he would go and lay on his bed and he would just eat it. Yeah, and it um, yeah, it would satisfy him. He was eating something. It took him a while to eat it. Not, you know, it, you know, not an hour, but you know, like five minutes or so. And it just basically distracted him and got his head away from food. And so that's what I would do um, for him with, you know, Rodrigo, who is like our high metabolism dog. I mean, he can eat so much food and not gain a pound. Um, and I kind of wish all my dogs were like that because it's so nice. But I do. I, I'll show it to you. I have a scale. It's right here. So I oh, got wow, this off. Yeah. yeah. I got it off of Amazon several years ago when Sydney was when I was trying to get weight off of her. And I started weighing her once a week to, to see our progress. Mm -hmm. And now I probably weigh my dogs probably once or twice a month just to see where they are. And I keep track in my calendar of where everyone is so I can make adjustments to their diet when I need to. Um, with puppies, I know one thing that when Scout and Zoe were puppies, someone said to me, um, having a round puppy is not a healthy puppy. It's, you know, people need to stop letting their puppies become these little fat little dumplings. And I didn't adjust their food because they were growing so quickly. They're a mixed breed dog. So there was none of that um, 
well, I'll just do 3% of their projected adult body weight because I don't know how big they're going to be. And I'm always worried about making sure they're getting everything they need in their diet. So for them, it was just more exercise. Once they were at a place where the vet gave the okay, where I can take them places, we were taking them everywhere. And since they were so little, we could take them to a park like super early in the morning when no one was around and just take them off leash and just let them run in circles. And since they were puppies, they would wear themselves out so quickly that it didn't take much. And and but yeah, it was just basically keeping them as active as possible. And then even um, living in the Pacific Northwest with the weather that we have occasionally, finding ways to get them to be active in the house, like hide and go seek or having them do some type of SNP training where you're hiding treats different places just to get them moving was always a it's it was always really easy to get the weight off of my dogs by doing these really small basic things which still surprises me to this day because whenever I think of losing weight I think about me and me searching for treats around the house is not going to move the dial. I, I need to actually go on very long walks. I need to do it consistently. I need to watch what I eat. There's, it's a lot more complicated with me than it is with my dogs, which I appreciate. So, okay. I heard this many years ago and it stuck with me and not, not everything sticks with me, but this stuck with me. And I'm wondering if you heard it too. And you kind of, kind of mentioned something along these lines earlier. Um, what I heard was that if somebody is feeding a kibble diet, which under, you know, most people do these days and it's understandable. Some people need to, if you're feeding a kibble diet and you're feeding, you know, based the guidelines on the back of the bag as to how much you're supposed to be feeding and you are advised to help your pet lose weight, to decrease the amount you're feeding. What I heard that stuck with me was that if you are not feeding based on the recommendations on the back of that bag, then there could be nutrient deficiencies. Yeah. And I heard you kind of mention that a little bit earlier. Was that specifically related to commercial pet food or do you think? That- it's for all pet food. I mean, because yeah. even with me, with my meal prep, you know, I have a set system where I know that this works to make sure my dogs are getting all of their nutritional needs met. But if I cut back, I don't know how much I can cut back where that's going to compromise. Them. And because, Thank you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I just love it because, because of you, I do that with Zoe or I'm like, thank you, Zoe. Thank you. And it works because it's just like, she just, for years, it was so, aggravating because she is a barking dog Um, but I would acknowledge her like thank you and she would be like okay I I did my job and I just love that but yeah I just I worry about um just how much I can take back because and also in some cases like with Sydney it was a year that I was adjusting her diet and getting exercise because I had to build up her tolerance for exercise And I don't know what type of damage that could have possibly done if I cut back too far. Mm -hmm. So um, and I also on the flip side, when it comes to commercial food, I question the serving amounts because, Mm -hmm. you know, I go back to every dog is unique and some dogs may do very well. Um, If you have a dog that isn't absorbing nutrients well, I have. Um, Rodrigo, he has exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. Mm -hmm. So he needs more food than his siblings and to make sure that he is getting his nutritional needs. So for him, I would feed more. I think when it comes to kibble, the, the biggest, you know, red flag is the carbs. And Mm -hmm. so many kibble diets out there are dancing around 50% carbs. And if you are, you know, living in an apartment, working full time, and you don't have the time or the, to, you know, to walk your dog or the space for your dog to be walked. If you're in an area where everyone's dogs are off leash and so it's just not safe. If you don't have a place where you can go, then your dog is eating this high carb diet and not getting enough exercise to burn off that excess energy. And that is the um, 
that is the biggest worry that I have when it comes to, you know, an overweight dog. And the reason why so many people, when they switch their dogs to home cooked or raw, they see this massive weight loss because you took the carbs out. I mean, it's the same thing with humans. It's like, you know, when you cut back on carbs on the flip side, like you said, for a lot of people, for 95% of pet parents out there, this is what they're feeding. And, um, but I still think that you can feed, um, you know, it has to go with like, start looking at the kibble that you're buying for your dog. Um, you, it may have to be a, a brief period of using some type of prescription um, dog food. It's not ideal, but you can work with a veterinarian to figure out what is going to help your dog lose weight given your personal circumstances. But my favorite thing, which goes to everything, not just with weight loss, is just add fresh food to the bowl because you can leave the kibble alone. Like maybe this is what you're going to feed, fine. But what else are you feeding? Um, because one thing that I do with my dogs, if if I'm feeding like with the 4th of July weekend that just passed, I was using training treats to desensitize them to the fireworks. And so I adjusted their meals those days. So on the 4th of July, the only thing they had for a meal were raw meaty bones and then all of these different types of treats because um, that's what they were going to eat. And so those are the type of things is I think that a lot of dogs, I know this was in my case, are overweight because we never think about the other stuff we're giving them throughout the day. And, you know, and it's a time to switch out all of these treats. If you're feeding kibble, your dog shouldn't have anything carb related. I mean, you should just be going towards the low glycemic, you know, green beans and um, broccoli or, you know, if, if your dog will eat vegetables and if your dog won't eat vegetables, I would suggest um, a single ingredient protein treat and then adjust back the meal maybe a little bit if you um, do a lot of those. Yeah, they there's there's so many really good single ingredient treats now. And oh my God. Even yeah. like subscription boxes. I know there's one that, that you like. I've recently found one that I like. And I mean, Kim just goes nuts when the box comes in and <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I, I love it. Of course, my husband is like, he literally is like opening cabinets and he's like, well, why do we have so many cabinets full of dog trees? <laughs> I'm like, well, if you think that's a lot, don't go look in the refrigerator in the garage, okay? <laughs> because <laughs> I like hoard dog treats. <laughs> I do. I mean, well, today is the first Wednesday of the month at our local pet store. They knock everything off 20%, all fresh food. So raw, cooked, gently cooked, freeze dried, dehydrated, food, treats, everything. Oh, nice. um, bone broth, raw goat milk, everything is, is 20% off. So I, I usually go and that's where I get my cat food. Um, but I also will sometimes pick up treats. And so I went this morning and I'm like so proud of myself because I did not bring home any treats. <laughs> because like you, I will find treats, like I will get a good special or it'll be like a new brand that I've never tried before. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna do a review of these. I never do. Um, and last year I started cleaning up all the treats and I filled um, an entire store, a huge storage container filled with treats. Oh and, um, and, I still had more after that. So it's just like, I need to stop. And I, I was, I've been updating my blog and going back to old blog posts and rewriting them. And, and so I rewrote a couple about dog treats and I'm looking at them like, I don't give hardly any of these treats anymore. And I'm like, nope, delete all of this. And when I went to go add like the different types of treats that I like to give my dogs, I was blown away by you know, how many there are today compared to when I originally wrote the article. I mean, there's just, I mean, there's so much, they're so expensive though, but you know, there are, and I think treats are so like people in general don't put enough thought into the treats specifically. I even like the little boutique pet food store that I shop at, She's, first of all, I love the woman that owns it. She's incredible. And um, that's where I get all of my food. Even if she doesn't stock it, she'll order it for me if she can. And, um, but the one complaint I have is that I do not love her treat section. 
It's like I have there's so many treats that I know she there's availability because she's ordered them for me that 90 something percent of the treats she has up on her treat wall. <laughs> Sorry, there's a fly that just flew in my mouth. <laughs> okay. It's one of those things. Um, <clears throat> like 90% of the treats on, on her treat wall, if not more, have ingredients in them that I don't love. For, there's fillers, there's potatoes yeah. and starches, there's you know, sunflower oil, whatever it may be. I'm like, why does that need to be in this treat? And so that's like the one complaint I have. And this is a healthy pet food store. So I'm like, yeah. you know, most people are walking in going, this is great. I can just pick what I want because I know it's healthy. Well, I, I would totally revamp her treat section for sure if it were up to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I know what you mean. It's There's a, a Canada, they finally kicked me off of their list, but they used to send me treats for free and asked me if I was going to do a review. I'd get an email. Are you going to review these? And I would send an email back saying no. And this is why. And it's like, you know, you have treats that say they're trout and cranberry. Um, there is hardly any trout or hardly. They're like, those are the, the the what's on the cover and the picture. They're the last two ingredients. Yeah. You know, and it's like, which means that there's very little trout and cranberries or whatever berries it was in it. So it's like, this is not a good treat, in my opinion. Um, of Someone emailed me, uh, I think last week or the week before last, to see if I would be interested in, in reviewing some treats. And they're like, we can get you some and stuff like that. And I checked the link and looked at the treats and was like, I can't. I, I would never give these treats to my dogs. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because it's like there's molasses. It's like I would never reach for molasses as a food that I would <laughs> add to my dog's dish. And yeah. then there was there is natural flavoring and then there's smoky flavoring. So it's like you guys hit it up twice with the flavoring. And it's like, you know, if you took the dog's naturally magazine <laughs> that food course, you know, he's like nothing good comes from that. I don't yeah. need to have flavoring. And in my opinion, because I often get this where people will come back and go, well, the flavoring is just like, you know, chicken. Da, 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 da. And I was like, then it's too bad you didn't say that. I was like, because yeah. as long as your label says that it's this random flavoring. flavoring, I'm not going to give that to my dog. I don't feel comfortable with it. And yeah. Totally, and a lot of totally people agree. don't understand that. And, you know, and I think a lot of people sort of have the attitude of like, oh, you know, it's just a treat. It's like when I go and have chips or when I go and have McDonald's. But it's just like, but are you having chips and McDonald's all day, every day? Because mm -hmm. that's basically how we're treating treats. Every time our dog does something cute or adorable or sometimes with training, we'll break them up. And we don't realize that, you know, we basically just fed a third meal that's has a whole bunch of shady ingredients in it, and we're wondering why our dog is fat. So I think those are some great, great tips. I think more than anything, we need to re realize, that's the word I was thinking of, realize how important exercise is for our dogs. Yeah. And um, yeah, a lot of us probably are overfeeding, but like my go-to is like, let's let's start with exercise and see see what we can do with the food, like kind of as a, as a secondary, um, mm -hmm. because like we were talking about, I definitely don't want to see a dog have any sort of nutrient deficiency, especially somebody that's like coming to me saying, what should I do? Like I, I wouldn't want, um, ever to put a dog in a nutrient deficiency. I would much rather see you switch from a dry food to, um, some sort of fresh food, but you know, that's, that's a second, that's, that's something we can talk about <laughs> more. Well, and I think you're right about the exercise. I, you know, I was looking into rotational mono feeding earlier this year and I just, mm -hmm. I just found the, the diet and the theories behind it so interesting. But one thing that stood out, many things stood out, but one thing that stood out was, you know, like if our dogs were wild dogs, how much exercise would they get in the day? It's like, they're probably walking, running, hunting, you know, um, 20, 30 miles a day. Whereas mm -hmm. as pets, you know, my dogs are all over on the sofa <laughs> right now. I mean, they will, they have had exercise, you know, twice today and they will get more exercise today. But in reality, our dogs live a very sedentary lifestyle compared to their wild counter counterparts. And so, mm -hmm. you know, they are still dogs. They still have the same DNA, the same skeletal structure. They still 
have a need for exercise. Um, mm-hmm. And it's just up to us to make adjustments to our life to make sure they get it. And yeah. it's not easy for everyone, but you know, there are really cool ways. I mean, pack walks, you know, are, are cool things to do. I you have done that with my dogs and they do really well on it. I have friends that have land. And so like with Apollo, because he's our youngest and most hyper, I will just take him to my friend's property and let him out the car. And while I'm inside drinking tea, he's running around 15 acres with a bunch of other dogs. And by the time, you know, I come back outside an hour later, he's just sort of like dead on his feet and ready to go home. And, but, you know, and then there's like the sniff spot because I am so not a fan of dog parks and I Mm -hmm. very much envy people who have like the membership dog parks where it's more controlled um, Mm -hmm. environment. But I used to take my dogs to a sniff spot where you basically it's a um, Airbnb for yards and you rent someone's yard for 45 minutes. It's your yard for that period of time. You and your dogs, you never have to come across any other dogs while you're there. And um, what's nice is that since it's a sniff spot and other dogs were there, there's Mm -hmm. tons to sniff and the dogs um, there's, it's funny because we have five acres and um, my partner would be like, why would you go and rent five acres when we have five acres? And I'm like, because it smells different. Exactly. And I will sniff my dogs to a sniff spot for 45 minutes and they will just run and play. And I, I mean, I literally don't have to do anything. I just stand mm-hmm. there and um, they're just running and playing for the entire time because they're just like sniffing, like, where does this place? And that's huge for them. I mean, of course, it's it's an expense that not everyone can cover, but um, it is an option. Well, yeah, and this it's really the same idea, like friends, family, neighbors, mm-hmm. even like, yeah, like there's still ways you could feasibly do something similar and, and not have to pay anything. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, that that that's good that's a great idea thank you <laughs> um so yeah i think we covered i think we covered just about everything okay i think i mean there's <laughs> lo- honestly like so many other things are popping in my head but it's probably more than we could even talk about like i'm i'm right now my mind is fixating on you were talking about um your female dogs and like my mind just goes to, because I've been having so many issues personally, my mind goes to, well, especially if those dogs are spayed, especially if those dogs were spayed yeah. early on, then yeah. the hormones in the body that should be there aren't there because we, so like how, there's so much that goes into why a dog could be retaining weight. Mm-hmm. And it could be like, for me, I, I truly feel like it, when the horm- you don't have the hormone production that you're supposed to have in the body, then yeah, you, you could be packing on the pounds just because your body isn't regulating it's so true. properly. It's so um, true. I, there was a period of time where I, because when I used to take birth control, um, I took a low dose birth control because I was just very sensitive to it. It turned me into a raging biatch. I mean, I literally could not do birth control. But I... <laughs> gynecologist when I was a kid um, and I wasn't a kid but you know I was a college student um, figured it out and was like oh no this is actually normal and we'll put you on this one and what it was was like it was a high estrogen um, birth control and it was fine worked great for me for decades and then I hit my 40s and it wasn't working anymore my blood pressure skyrocketed mm-hmm. and i would gain weight by breathing it was just like i it was i swelled up to this you know and i was just like what the heck is going on with me and my my gynecologist you know she was you know having me do tests and blood work and we're trying to figure out and she was just like it's the birth control so took me off the birth control the weight went away, the blood pressure went normalized, everything was perfectly fine. So that to me makes absolute sense. I mean, Sydney was spayed, I think at about seven, eight months and Zoe was spayed around the same time. Um, I think with Sydney, I think it, it was partially that. I also think it's personality. Sydney, she, she was a sedentary dog. She 
I mean, she was fun and active when she was younger, but after she um, tore her cruciate doing zoomies, um, she, she started slowing down because it hurt. And um, Zoe, thankfully, is, is very healthy. But, um, but yeah, she will, if I'm not careful with her, it's so easy to focus more on her brother Scout who wants to play fetch and wants to race and run that I have to make sure that um, she's getting the exercise that she needs as well. Because before you know it, she's packed on five pounds. And, mm -hmm. you know, even though five pounds isn't a lot for humans, it can be significant for a dog. Yeah, absolutely. It sure can. Well, Kimberly, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for talking to me about this topic. I know it, I feel like it, it probably touches 95% of households with pets, right? Like, well, yeah. I mean, and it's, and it's not something we talk about that often because whenever, you know, I just think about, you know, whenever I see someone post a picture of their, you know, quote unquote fat dog on social media, you go to the comments and everyone is pretty awful about it. Mm -hmm. You, your dog needs to lose weight. And it's like, yeah, no, duh. Um, I'm Unless, sure they understand that. Yeah. If you're not, if, if you see a picture like that, that's not in the pet community, like out, like just regular normal folk, <laughs> they're all like, oh my God, how cute and adorable. And I'm yeah. like, yes, but no. <laughs> well, it's like the, the Ottoman dogs. When you see a dog that looks like a little Ottoman and it's just like, I, I don't say anything. I'm not a veterinarian. I don't know their situation, but it, yeah. it is. It's, it's, I, that's the reason why I used to do festivals every summer. We have lots of dog focused festivals here and I would do it with my big sign of, you know, does your dog have allergies and talking to people about raw feeding. I stopped doing it because I hated seeing fat dogs. And um, it would be hard for, I mean, I wouldn't say anything, but I also don't have a poker face. So it's just sort of like, I'm judging you all over my face with <laughs> that dog. And I, you know, and I didn't feel, it wasn't nice. And I just didn't feel comfortable. And I, I'm just very, very hesitant to offer up unsolicited advice about health issues and diet when I'm not a nutritionist and I'm not a veterinarian. If someone asked me, then we can have a conversation. But I just finally was just like, no. And a lot of these people, you know, they'll say, well, my veterinarian says my dog is healthy. And that's so hard because how do you argue against that? If, if a veterinarian isn't staying on top of us to tell us, hey, we need to make sure your dog loses weight. And they're telling you that your dog is healthy when it's very obvious that the dog is not healthy. Um, that's yeah, I, I got nothing for you. Yeah. I don't know how to I, respond to that. Yeah. And I, I think, is it maybe Dr. Judy Morgan, who recently, she's been talking about, mm -hmm. like, what are normal levels in these blood yeah. tests and the standardized, that, how, how should that apply to every dog out there? How should that apply to every cat out there? And we have to take so many other things into consideration. So mm -hmm. it's... Yeah, when you when you have a veterinarian who just kind of says, "Well, it's all in the normal range." Well, what yeah. is normal? <laughs> what is I mean, normal? It is. It's, it's like one of the, and it also it goes to where I feel like sometimes people listen to what they want to hear, yeah, and leave the rest of it at the vet's clinic. So the veterinarian did say something about weight loss and stuff, but maybe they followed up with you know, just a few pounds. And, you know, there's otherwise they're still very healthy. And, and the only thing that people walk away hearing is that they're still very healthy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm good to go. Yeah. So it's, it's a tough one. And it, I mean, it, it's one of those where I think for probably for most dogs, it's easy for them to lose weight if we make sure they're getting the exercise that they need. Mm -hmm. But having had, you know, quote unquote, fat, raw fed dogs, personally, I am on the side of it's not easy for a lot of us is, you know, it, you know, it's hard to get your dog to lose weight because if your dog is injured, you don't want to aggravate that injury. If your dog, you know, how do you, how much do you take back? Because it's just like with Sydney, I like cut her food way back and she was not moving the dial and she was hungry and I couldn't do that to her. Yeah. So it was just sort of like, well, what do we do here? And there's just so many things to 
that can make it complicated for some people. So I guess I'm saying all that, that if you see someone posting about their fat dog on social media, give them a little grace because yeah, it's, it's not easy. easy for everyone. No, it's definitely not. It's definitely not easy. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much again My for pleasure. being here. I really appreciate you. And everybody, where where can everybody find you? You can find me at my website, keepthetailwagging.com. And um, I am that person that was not thoughtful when I did my social media. So Facebook is Keep the Tail Wagging. Instagram is Dog Blogger Life. I don't know why I did that, but I did. And oh, partly because someone took Keep the Tail Wagging. I was able to get mm -hmm. my pictures taken down, but I'm they're not even using it. <laughs> but I couldn't get to keep the tail wagging. Um, and I, I mean, I guess I could do something longer, but I just I just don't want to change it now. Um, and that's pretty much it. You know, my website, yeah. Facebook and Instagram is where I pretty much live online. Awesome. And well, you have Patreon too. And I have Patreon and that's keep <laughs> wagging. So I, I was, I was gonna, I'm getting that name. <laughs> and once a year I do check back with Instagram to see if the person get, got rid of it oh. so I can change it. But uh, it is what yeah. it is. It's life. Well, thank you. And everybody, I do hope you, if you're not already following Kimberly, I have no idea why you wouldn't be. So go ahead and do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I just, until the next time, I'm lucky enough to have you on. I hope you have hey, a wonderful day and that you time. continue to feel better. Me too. I'm, I'm, I'm giving myself one more week and then I'm just going to be like, no, this is, I'm just going to fake it until it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but today is better than last week, so it is getting better. That's good. I'm glad to hear it. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day. And you. everybody, um, make sure if you haven't already started uh, or, you know, following the podcast, please do so and rate the podcast if you would, because that is the best way to let whichever app you're on, Apple, Google, Spotify, all the things, uh, know that this is an awesome podcast and to suggest it for other people. So <laughs> with that, have um, a great rest of your day. Give your pets some extra love from me and from Kimberly today, and I will talk to you next week. Yay. Oh, oh, oh. Ow, ow, ow.